Greetings to you, our viewers, wherever you're watching us from, and a happy new year 2022 to you. This is CPK TV, the voice of the people. I'm your host, Sefusani, coming to you live from GEM constituency in Siaya County, Mos Marhiga Manyen, which is the lure for Happy New Year. And the GEM constituency is made up of a population of about 200,000 people with about 90,000 registered voters. And today we speak to a member of County Assembly from East Gem, which has 27,000 in population and 14,000 registered voters. Karibu sana, uh, Jafuambo, who is also a journalist in this area. Thank you, Sefu. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Yes. And just maybe we can start with an introduction. I, I've said you're a Jafuambo, which is something I have learned while I've been in this area. Maybe you can tell our people what that means and just introduce yourself Thank uh, you, for Sefu. a period of time. My name is Vitalis Odiambotunga. Just the way you are saying, I'm a journalist by profession. Jafuambo is journalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've worked, uh, this is my ninth year in the field. I first worked, uh, I've worked in different radio stations. Mm -hmm. First one was based in Oma Bay County, mm -hmm. that's Gulf Radio. I've also worked for Sky FM, and I've worked also for Royal Media Services Radio Ramugi. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently I was working for Ratego Radio, mm -hmm. of which I've now leaving that field, coming to the politics. The political field, yes. and you know, I mean, it's a big challenge. And, you know, just to start us off, what made you want to switch your profession, you know, from journalism, su such that you have such a passion and you're willing to give up your profession to take up the political field? Thank you. Being in the field of journalism, mm -hmm. uh, got some exposure. Yes. Uh, we've been covering different events. Yes. Development projects mm -hmm. from different areas. And now, if uh, also being in that field, I've uh, traveled a lot and I've seen different developments in different worlds. Mm -hmm. When I pictured back at home mm -hmm. or in my ward, mm -hmm. I've seen that there's some gap. Mm -hmm. There's something we are lacking. And that's now I'm saying, instead of highlighting the project from different areas, yes. I want to take this opportunity to come and do, it, do them for our people so that they also, our wards also be at the same level as others. And that is such a uh, self-sacrifice. And what, how, how was your journey, you know, coming into the Communist Party of Kenya and uh, how, uh, what, what you've gotten into so far, how far you've gotten uh, with the Communist Party of Kenya to even the level of, you know, vying for member of county assembly for East Game. Thank you. you know, uh, in Kenya, there's that democracy. Yes. And we have uh, as many political parties as possible. Mm. So I was listening to different parties, mm -hmm. ideologies, yes. and even some of their manifestos. Mm -hmm. So after listening to these different parties, uh, I concurred with those ideologies of CPK. And I said that now this is the party that will help uh, me also to drive the people's agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, the Communist Party of Kenya, when you look at our manifesto and our ideology, uh, we always work with the working class and the farmers, which I've learned in this area, we say Jopur for the farmers and Jotich for for the workers and of course um, to eliminate the class struggle that is in our society. What are the challenges that you have found in this area with the Jotich and the Jopur and also in eliminating the class struggle that is in this ward of East Game. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, just uh, East Game ward, we have about 27,000 population. Yes. And about uh, 13,000 plus voters. Yeah. And these people, about 80% of, of East Game residents are farmers. Mm -hmm. They are local farmers. Mm -hmm. And what I realized, I remember farming or agriculture was devolved mm -hmm. since we got in the 2010 constitution, the devolution. Mm -hmm. Agriculture was devolved. And uh, if the 80% of our people are farmers, we lack or uh, there's not that leadership that I have offered them, maybe uh, something on training about agriculture. And uh, that's why, because uh, Communist Party of Kenya uh, defends or works with the uh, the teach, farmers, yeah, all the teach. farmers, yes, and the farming point. is devolved. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming in so that we can work together with the CPK to help our people 
or train them more on agriculture. Thank you very much for being so elaborate on that. And I mean, what training opportunities or activities do you have lined up? Because when we look at your manifesto, I think which you will debunk much later on, yeah. agriculture is, you know, fast on the list of things that you want to do. And you've spoken about 80% of the population in East Gem being farmers. Also in the manifesto of uh, the aspirant from the Communist Party of Kenya, who is also a vice chairperson, uh, Bukangesa Omole, the first thing that he also wants to deal with in this area of East Game is agriculture, meaning that agriculture is at the heart of the people of Game. So what are these plans or activities or trainings that you have planned for the people of East Game specifically? And what are these crops, you know, that uh, are yielding uh, very much in this area? Okay, thank you. Um, just the way you've said, uh, we, uh, I want to tackle that agriculture because the uh, East Game agriculture, the farming is favorable of the, because of the agricultural land mm. that we have and also it's the terrible. climate or the weather of the world favors agriculture. So my leadership will enhance or will uh, do intensive crop production mm -hmm. and promote zero grazing mm -hmm. because most of our people, we have the, those keep, keep livestock like cows, poultry and goats. Mm -hmm. And again, in uh, East Game, we have also permanent water sources, about four streams that are permanent. Mm -hmm. In terms, in this agriculture, we can all, all organize through different partners and also with the Communist Party of Kenya as a whole, yes. so that these permanent water sources are used for irrigation, mm -hmm. to produce uh, like uh, vegetables, e.g. the tomatoes in the- Which are doing very well, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. And, you know, speaking about water, which also is very important in the issue of agriculture, we see that the people in the area rely so much on rainfall as much as they have very arable land, which, you know, can be used even when there is no rainfall. How do you plan to sort this issue such that agriculture goes hand in hand with water? How will they be able to have water throughout the year such that they can practice this agriculture with or without you know rainfall scientifically as you know we speak about um, that's uh, why I've mentioned the four permanent water sources mm -hmm. the streams and uh, what our people lack and that's why they still depend on the rainfall is proper training yes. they don't know if, if they are trained on the irrigation system then they will just pick it up so that's what uh, I look for uh, partners or, uh, uh, or technical officers to handle the irrigation. We use the water sources for irrigation purposes and uh, so that we not depend on the rainfall alone. Okay. Yeah. It's just because they've not been trained or educated. Mm -hmm. or there are some things needs to be highlighted for them. Yes. So that also, and also I'll organize for some exchange visits mm -hmm. for exposure of some leaders of the community yes for exposure yes so that they when they come back now they can do it yeah thank you very much and also dwelling still on the issue of water you've spoken about the four permanent streams of water but um in east game there's a very big issue of water in most of the homes such that people are not able to access fresh and clean water how are you planning to tackle that and I'll give an example of you know the Sagam uh, mixed secondary school where inside the school they have about 600 students but they have no source of water so they have to send a bus with jerry cans to fetch water from a stream and bring it back to the students to be able to use whereas in that area there is a lot of water that is underground that you know can be harnessed for a place such as the school or even the Sagam Community Hospital, which are part of uh, East Gem. What are your plans in terms of, you know, water sources getting to the homes of the people? Because the streams are there and they are permanent, but how do they get to the people when they are clean and when they are sanitized and people are able to, to use them for their daily use? Okay, thank you for that, Sefu. Just the way you are saying, uh, I've mentioned to you that we only lack good leadership. Yes. Because, uh, like uh, you've mentioned the schools, where uh, my leadership will organize how we can drill some boreholes mm -hmm. and the schools of families that uh, 
just a uh, short distance to the water sources, yes. if we can use the solar event to pump mm -hmm. the water to different centers around so that uh, to reduce the distance walking to the river. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to make sure that at least there's piped water mm -hmm. uh, near homes, not in every home, yes, but, but at least Accessible, mm. accessible in an area that is accessible to them but where the distance long a log is how we can drill some balls mm -hmm. yes uh, thank you very much uh, for that and you know when you look at the manifesto of the communist party of kenya it speaks about political and uh, social reforms in the area and of course when we speak about uh, social reforms we have you know social areas where a lot of people gather and in, uh, for the people of east game there are a lot of churches where people go to uh, to either to worship or to fellowship or they meet uh, every once a week or, you know, as, as, as much as they can. But also we see these churches are used as social places, for example, social halls when people have funerals, etc., to be able to meet there. But the churches can also play a role because um, we've seen even in the rural areas, the issue of depression, you know, is coming up uh, very highly for the people of the village. And many other social issues like teenage pregnancies, because maybe parents are not able to speak to their children about uh, such issues and they end up, you know, picking up a couple of things from the environment. Um, what would be your take or how would you plan uh, to work with such uh, social organizations as the church, which is, you know, very strong in this area of East Game? Thank you. You know, in, uh, in East Game or in our area, you find that we've not, or the current leadership have not realized the importance of the churches. We've just Taken the data, just let's pray for a place for we go for the, the, the spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. But now, my leadership, I intend to work with different or various churches so that we can establish and they can offer for us different uh, the, uh, activities like even uh, family planning, education, mm -hmm. uh, counseling, yes. just the way you've mentioned. Yes. Some people. You find that many people, some people can commit suicide yes. just because they they, 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 they lack cancer, they're not cancer. Yes, yes. And also this so we can use our churches, mm -hmm. not only for the spiritual nourishment, but, but for, social reforms. for social reforms. Thank you. And even when you speak about social reforms, I've seen, you know, having been in this area a bit of time, the issue of alcoholism is very rampant, especially amongst the young men, the population, the, the demographic of young men and generally just men in the area. Do you think that, you know, the church as a social organization now and not just spiritual nourishment can be used as a place of rehabilitation for such an issue in the area? Just give us your take on that. Exactly. The church can be used for, we can, uh, for uh, as a center, we, we can establish uh, a rehabilitation center within the church. Yes. And also, the church also can also be used. There's something here also that you, we must know. We have even elderly in our villages. Yes. Some people, I can let me use this word that neglected but not so. Mm -hmm. You find that he's uh, maybe an elderly, he's a mze. Maybe he lost his people. Mm -hmm. He remained alone. So you find that it's so difficult even for the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's just there. So we can even use for the, the churches to create homes for these elderly. Mm -hmm. And also the district children that may be also available yeah. within the world. Mm -hmm. So the only problem that has been mm -hmm. is that we've not realized that churches can play this role. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm also I'm coming up with. Because mm -hmm. in my manifesto, I have also have churches that I and a plan how I'll work with them to ensure that these things they help us solving these problems. Mm -hmm. yes. And there's a song I've learned uh, as I've been here. I don't know, maybe you can help me. Come on, no matter what, Jackie. Mm -hmm. I want you to respond. Come on, no matter what, Jackie. Come on, no matter what, Jackie. You say Jackie. Come on, no matter what, Jackie. 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 Jackie. And, uh, you know, the reason why I'm referring to this song is that every each of the places that we have gone, you know, to campaign or to pass 
our message to the people we are received with a lot of song and pomp and you know whenever you sing the people you know really come alive and they listen to you and that means that you know the cultural uh, the cultural uh, ties in this area, you know, are really are really great. And the music is something that is used as a means of passing information. Even when you look at the music in terms of Ohangla, which originates from this area, and, you know, the Owalo skirts that are used in traditional music, is there any plans that you have towards, you know, this rich culture to preserve it uh, for the people? And, yeah. What are your plans towards preserving this uh, cultural heritage that we have here in okay. East Game? Thank you. Just uh, to mention for you, this is the only world that currently we don't have even a social hall yeah. for in the entire second. Mm. I told you, being a journalist, yeah. I've gone. You've this is the it. world. We don't have even a stadium yeah. and even a social hall where mm. those things. So my leadership, I intend to work with the community and then we identify a place that we can have even a social hall or a stadium mm. where annual cultural events or festive events can be held because they bring th those events bring people together mm -hmm. we get to learn some things about it you find that nowadays we even uh, uh, at a certain age of the youth we forget even some of our cultures yes. because uh, it has not been taken into practice for long mm -hmm. we don't have even a place where we can gather so that you find that some leaders Annually, they will just conduct the normal sporting activities, football, and, and they call it a day, you see. Uh, but uh, sports, we also have some funds from the county government for sports. Mm -hmm. If it is organized, it can be well Evolved. organized and uh, put together with the cultural events and held annually. So that it reminds us how, how, how for our cultures and uh, it brings people together. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of sports, uh, we we recently saw the sports team from this area, which is the area of Mindina in East Game. And I think it's called Mindina FC. We were working closely with, um, with their captain and we even went to meet uh, the sports team in this area. And they seem to be doing very well and to participate in certain tournaments in this area. Although they need a lot of support for them to be able to to come up and you know for them as young people also to be able to use this as an economic venture what what would what would be your take on sports and especially sports and young people and it uh, being also a means of recreation but also a means of economic empowerment for the young people in this area thank you you know uh, I normally tell uh, youths or any other people that let's not look sports just for sports yeah a sporting activity can be job itself. It also can be... Uh, so I normally tell them that if you have a talent, please, we need to nurture that talent from our youths. Yeah. So we've neglected it for long, the current leadership. So I'm coming up so that we can also nurture these talents and we don't do it just for... All, for example, you are mentioning Mindini. Yes. After playing, it ends there. Yes. My leadership, I'll try to bring on board mm -hmm. other clubs like Gorma here. Mm -hmm. Remember East Game, the chairman of the Gorma here comes from East Ambrose Game. Ambrose Rachier, yes. yes. It's from uh, East, East Game. Game. So when we organize these sporting activities, we can call the board of Gorma here. Mm -hmm. They come also. So and even source talent from source here to play for the national. From different clubs. Yes. At least we will help them instead of we just play it or hold the sport just for, for their sake. Yes. Then it uh, remains at the village level. Yes. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for devolving that issue of sports. And uh, we've seen uh, recently on the 24th of December that there was an event in Kisumu, which was, you know, a festival. And uh, the roads were closed down and it was able to bring the people of Kisumu together and even for them to see their development in the new year. Do you have any plans to hold such festivals in East Game? And, you know, what are... What are those plans? We've seen a lot of paragons in this area, like, you know, Wasonga Sijeo, who uh, did uh, very well in coming up with, you know, festival, festival events for the people, but also in just preserving the dignity and the unity of the people of East Game. Okay, just the way I told you that uh, I'm planning to have, uh, the first thing to create a social center mm -hmm. for our people. Yes. Yeah, if we create a social center, all these events can be held from that place from that area. and being organized by the community. Yes. yes.
Thank you very much. Also, um, traversing the area, we, we, we are able to see that this is a very patriarchal uh, society, but that is uh, in most of the societies that we come from that are African. And being a patriarchal society, then we see that the place of women uh, in the society is seen only uh, in the kitchen or in participating in roles such as, you know, uh, giving birth and uh, women do not have equal economic opportunities in this area or even leadership opportunities. It is, for example, very frowned upon for a lady who is married in East Game to vie for a political seat. So that means that the opportunities that are given to women and because of patriarchy, then there's a bit of uh, an imbalance. How do you plan to work with the women in this area to be able to uplift them or to give them equal um, opportunities for them to rise up as well. Thank you. Just the way you've said, women play a very important role in the community yeah. in terms of development. Yes. So my leadership will press for an equal opportunity mm -hmm. in terms of education and in terms of even administrative roles. Yes. So that there's no, so that we don't neglect them the way it has been. Mm -hmm. So I'll work hand in hand with women because mm -hmm. they, they play important role. Mm -hmm. Even if you can go to a farm in the world, you will find that many people that go to farm are women. The women, yes. If you go to church, many members of the church are women. Yeah. In the, even if there's a parent meeting yes. in a school, mm -hmm. you will find that number of men are higher than, uh, of women oh, higher yeah. than that of men. Mm -hmm. So they play a very important role. It's just, it's just uh, by mistake that our leadership or the leaders that have been there have neglected them. But mm -hmm. my leadership, will press for equal opportunities for all. For the women. For the you know, women. when you speak about the farming and the fact that women are the people who go to the farms, uh, you know, the question now begs is why they are not the people who get, you know, the economic, the economic uh, benefits that come from the farming. But that is something we can discuss um, at a whole other level. And speaking of women, women are a special interest groups together with um, persons living with disabilities who are not spoken about a lot and who are people that we live with in our society. Uh, what are your plans towards the persons living with disabilities in the area of East Game? Thank you. My plan, I'm also planning to work with uh, people living with disabilities. If you go to, just to mention like other wards, for example, our neighbor ward of West Game, we have a, a center that was, cons was built by World Bank through partnership with a formal leader, for formal le leadership. So my leadership, I'll also try and um, make sure that we have a center for people living with disabilities. Because you will find that these people, they can help us in other things, even uh, doing some uh, maths, you see. So I'll try to have a workshop or a, show, a workshop for, for them, and I'll, I'll work hand in hand with them. They will also help us in uh, doing some activities or uh, producing some products mm -hmm. for the ward. Apart from produce, do you plan to involve the persons living with disabilities in administrative exactly. roles, as, as you've said, or even, you know, to uh, equip them, like having a braille, especially, you know, being introduced into the administration system such that you can work with blind people or even a sign language being introduced as one of the languages that people should learn so that we are all able to communicate. Thank you. I'll press uh, equal opportunity for all, mm -hmm. of which if there's that opportunity where there's a data employment opportunity. I'll make sure mm -hmm. that even in a committee, in, in, in a committee, there's that person living with disability, mm -hmm. there's a woman and there's a youth, there's an elderly. Yes. So that it becomes all round. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that in every sector uh, of economic development, if it's even a committee, there's a person living with disability to represent the interest of of, of, uh, of those of those people. Okay. Yeah. And recently we visited your home for a small event where we had, you know, members of your clan coming together to support your bid. And of course we see that family ties in this area are very important such that, you know, maybe without the support of your clan it would be difficult for you to come uh, to come uh, in the community to vice leader. Uh, 
tell us about family disputes that are, you know, in this area and for those people maybe who may not have had, you know, the support that you had, which was immense from, you know, your clans, your clans folk who are uh, giving you, you know, the support uh, to go through your bid. But there are a lot of people in the area who have uh, family disputes and a lot of dis these disputes lead to, you know, death. And most of the disputes are because of land and inheritance. How do you plan to deal with such issues that are so deep-seated in the culture of this area? Thank you. First, to start with, uh, I met my clan. The reason why I was doing that, I didn't want them to just hear it mm. from outside. Yes. So the first thing was to call them and uh, tell them that I'm planning to do this, or I'm planning to vie as an MC, so that in case somebody, maybe it can be my uncle or my, <coughs> just, <coughs> or my uh, so in case You can have some water as we proceed, right? So in, in case of uh, an issue, so that they, they don't say that, oh, we only heard about it from other people. Yes. The son of so-and-so is vying. Mm -hmm. So before they say those things, I had to call them together. And <coughs> Our apologies. <coughs> I had to call them together. We discuss with them. Before now, I'm, I move outside, I go outside to tell the masses that now I'm in the video. Right. So they are the key. Family members are key, or the clan. They are the key, mm -hmm. the first people mm -hmm. to endorse you. Yes. Yeah. We, we got the blessings, great. Yes. Uh, from uh, elderly mm -hmm. also. Yeah. So that you see that. Um, so it, it also give you time also, an opportunity to weigh out. Mm. That, do they really love me or do they really like me? Or it's just by word of mouth. So when you call them together, uh, if they, they will open their minds, they will tell you, okay, what you need to do, you must do this and that, or even in this, our clan, and so and so also tried, or so and so, have no, there's no one has tried this. Or, mm. So you will get to know all those. Mm. So the family uh, is very important of the clan. And the problem that is there, uh, there's a... Uh, the issues the that disputes. we have, disputes in the family. Uh, you find that in some areas we have large families, mm -hmm. and extended somebody, maybe the polygamy, something of the sort. And uh, this is something that has been bringing the, those issues, the family disputes. And now, if to say, I'm sorry to say this, you will find that maybe somebody, if he is blessed, hmm, he feels some people, people are different, they, uh, they, then he feels that now I must be everything. Mm. You get it? I must be everything in this. So he didn't. He don't want to recognize. Even if he's a young person, he don't want to recognize elderly. He say, oh, after all, they will come for me for help. So it should not be that. Mm. Yeah, it should not be that way. So through that, the disputes will be there. Yes. Yeah. And. But specifically, Jafambo, I'm talking about the disputes of land and inheritance, which are very big uh, issues, you know, when we see land as a means of production, exactly. you know. So maybe these fights for land, it's, um, it's a war about who has the economic interest or who has the economic power in the family and, all, of course, um, putting other people out of the means of production and, you know, in this case, becoming a small imperialist in your own, in your own family. The, thank you. You know, the, the family dispute more so on land issues. Yes. These things can only be solved with the family mm -hmm. members. It is the family members or the parties that must now realize that we are one family. So they can just call for a, just a mediator or somebody. But the main solution is from them. Do you plan to have such conflict resolution measures where you have uh, mediators and people who are able to come and intervene and solve such disputes before they get, you know, to the courts of law or before they become, you know, such huge issues where people have to use resources and antagonize people in the area? That's why I was saying that I intend to work with various churches. Yeah. 
then through the this uh, pastors or whatever we can have for example even uh, so how, how can i put it even arbitration a, a, a arbitration center or a committee mm. that will handle in case before it goes to chief to the level of the chief at least some pastors around that can sit down with them we have a way of solving it before it goes on that's i think would be a very good social reform if you know it gets to to implementation another issue i think that we have in the ward of east game you know is the, the issue of calamities or natural disasters such as you know floods or the minefields that are in this area um, collapsing on the people on and for the schools, we've seen that whenever there are such harsh weathers, for example, floods, uh, children are not able to go to school for a very long you know, period of time. And of course, uh, they lose out on education and many other you know, issues such as uh, stormy weather. Do you have any plans you know, to mitigate such uh, nat uh, natural uh, calamities? Do you have any disaster uh, management plans for the people of East Game? Thank you. In my manifesto, I have the disaster management committee that I'll create. In that committee, we will, working with the community, we will also create some funds so that this disaster that, or the calamities that uh, normally takes out. For example, in this game, we have uh, some minings that claim lives of our people. <coughs> we have stormy weather that blow out uh, schools, uh, roofs. So you find that sometimes, it happens in a situation where maybe even if you are a leader, if you didn't create that, then you don't have funds or emergency funds immediately. Mm -hmm. So my leadership will create a disaster management committee yes. of which we will have some funds so that uh, when these things happen, the, the committee will evaluate mm -hmm. the, amount or what, the, the amount of the damage. And then from the kitty, we will have something small to support. Okay. Yeah. I think those are very good plans for the people of East Game, which are extremely thought out. And also, uh, when we talk about natural disasters, of course, we cannot miss to speak about the environment yeah. in, in Game and in East Game specifically. And of course, walking around and even this area where we are having our interview is extremely green and well preserved. Although in some of the areas when you walk around, uh, we can see that, you know, there's, for example, a scarcity of trees or some of the areas look a bit arid. Do you have any plans for the preservation of the environment? And of course, when we talk about preservation of the environment, I remember Uhuru Park also in Nairobi, which uh, is under siege and which the Communist Party of Kenya, through uh, the Secretary General, uh, Benedict Washira, and other lawyers in the party have worked very hard uh, in petitioning, you know, for the halt of the constructions that are happening there and um, the damage to the environment. So what plans do you have, you know, for East Game to preserve its environment and also its natural resources? Thank you. Preservation of our environment is absolutely critical for the survival of basic life. Yes. From plants, even water and yes. soil. Yes. So my leadership, I will I'll make sure that through working with the community, at least 10% of the world is preserved for indigenous trees so that we have, we preserve our environment. That's the plan I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And I think that's a very good plan for, you know, the preservation of the environment. And also we've uh, we've spoken earlier on about a gold mine that is in the area of East Gem. And, you know, I was a bit uh, taken aback that there's gold uh, in such an in this area uh, once we found that out. What is your plan for natural resources and minerals such as, you know, the gold that is in this area? And do you have any plans to have maybe a geological survey to see whether some such resources can be found in different parts of, of East Game and how they can be used also to, up, to uplift um, the livelihoods of the people in the area. Thank you. <clears throat> we have natural resources like gold, as you mentioned, mm. uh, but my leadership will try to make or have a policy to guide the way they are being exploited or yes. they are being used so that they, it, uh, they can help the people. our people economically. 
not just that because I've seen a land of so and so as go, let's go and mine it. We, if we have a policy and proper techniques, mining techniques, so that we also prevent the loss of lives uh, that might happen when they are exploited. So my leadership will put a policy and a guidelines so that if it's found, for example, East game we have about four sublocations, eh, Ramula, Uranga, Leander, and Mareño. So that if it happens that it's somewhere like in Ramula, at least the people, for the residents of Ramula, can see an impact that we have a natural resource. Yes, resources yeah. can be it can be exploited and economically can help and improve the living standards of our people. Not that it's just left there. That somebody, so that uh, I'll also try to put away brokers that um, may, there are many brokers that have made it or made our people not to benefit much on f from these natural resources. Well, speaking about brokers, you know, we've seen in earlier years and in earlier times that these brokers are usually people from the government and especially from the county government and especially from these, you know, devolved functions who come and exploit the people and especially their resources. What are your plans to mitigate such things from happening, uh, be it from, you know, your county government, from the larger county government, the larger game? Thank you. From in my leadership. I'll try to create committees from, for different sectors mm. so that in each sector I know that we have a committee of this number of people that will be responsible or will be handling that sector. Mm. Through that I'll make sure that uh, I'll uh, manage these brokers. Once I've created a committee so we will know that if even someone from the county government or national government, there's where he can, if, some, if, if he wants to enter into an area, he must go through the committee. They discuss with the committee before he goes just directly to those people. And speaking of that, that brings me to another issue of corruption, which has been very rampant in CIA. And we see, we've seen earlier on through uh, a couple of activities from the Communist Party of Kenya, that a lot of money totaling to around 600 million has been embezzled in CIA County, but also here in in GEM constituency, we've seen uh, corruption uh, when we spoke about, you know, the school uh, in uh, the school that uh, was built by our vice chairperson and the corruption case that ensued thereafter uh, in CIA. And when we look at the county assembly, we see it as an oversight of uh, the county or of the county government and the leadership of the county. What are your plans in, you know, uh, corruption in the area of CIA as a whole and also in East Game as with your oversight uh, role that you will achieve through the member of county assembly? Thank you. In, the, in terms of, uh, in the issue, on the issue of corruption, it just depends on the kind of the leader that you have. So my leadership will try and to at least uh, uh, manage and uh, I'll not encourage any form of corruption. And even at the assembly, I will aggressively initiate a debate, positive debates in the county assembly that are on matters that will improve, uh, even in terms of political and economic activities of the ward and the entire county. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, also speaking about corruption, we see the politics in this area and in most areas of the country um, depend a lot on voter bribery, which is something which is called Gonya politics in this area. And the issue of Gonya is very rampant that I think in most of the places that we've gone to, the people, of course, um, expect that you will leave them with something little, you know, uh, starting from 50 shillings and going up. And this is the way in which, you know, uh, voting has happened in the previous years. How do you plan to mitigate this or how do you plan to go about to go about your campaign, excuse me, such that there is no use of the Gonya politics, but the people are still able to vote you in? Thank you. <clears throat> I can say the Gonya thing has come up because... Uh, of the kind of the, 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 the 
life standards of our people. And it has brought with the leaders those who have not performed. So they believe that even if I've not performed, I'll just dish out some money, then I'll be voted back. And uh, that's why I joined CPK, so that we can fight this thing together. Yes. And we bring change, so that we don't believe in the Gonya. We talk to our people. You know, it's also when you do the kind of politics that political rally of the road show or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. it encourages much Gonya. But when you visit, for example, churches or groups, you talk to them in a, maybe in a certain house, you edu try to educate them, you tell them the best thing we will do is one to two. If you have a good policy, the Gonya issue will not be there. Mm -hmm. But those who lack manifesto and what they plan to do with the people, they are the people encouraging Gonya. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing they can tell people. But let me tell you that our people, if you go to them and you tell them that, I'll do for you this, then you present for them your manifesto. At least there will be no Gonya. But if you don't have manifesto, then obvious they will. They will ask. They will say. Will they will tell you? Oh, just finish with us, because there's nothing you are presenting to them. Mm -hmm. But if you have manifesto, at least they will listen to you. So and again, uh, I'll I'll also try that when I get this seat. The main thing is to empower our community. If they are empowered, up an, an empowered community, there will be nothing like Gonya. Because first they will have food, they, will have, they are empowered. So why Gonya? Mm -hmm. Because he will say that uh, instead of that 50 bob, he is doing something that gives him even 500 shillings. So there will be no Gonya. Mm -hmm. So the first important thing is to empower our community. And speaking about empowerment of community and Gonya politics, the issue of youth unemployment or just unemployment as a whole in the region comes out because while a lot of young people do not have, you know, means of economic empowerment. So for them, it is very easy to ask for, you know, uh, give me something now because they do not have anything. What is your plan towards uh, the young people in, and, and especially in regards to the issue of employment for them to be able, you know, to get sustainable means of livelihoods in this area and also to do away with the issue of alcoholism? Oh, uh, the youths are, if the youths are kept busy, if you keep them busy, there's no, no when they are idle, that's when you will uh, get this alcoholism or whatever. I'm planning to work with youth groups. <clears throat> I'll have them, arrange them into groups from their different backgrounds or areas. And then we identify certain activity that they can do mm -hmm. and that will bring for them an income. You can have even a youth group and you, through them, uh, you can have an activity even if it's farming, they will produce certain crop. Even if they can have even poultry farming, for example, mm -hmm. as a group, then a group somewhere, you through the funds from the county government or through partnerships, you can also help them with uh, these machines like block making machines. So they become busy. You know, like now, this even sector, the motorcycle sector, yes. the motorbike, it has employed many people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, through that, if there's a way you can have even a stage for them. You, you tell them that those who are in this sector, I want us to have even a cooperative, where you as a person, you can even just save your 20 bob, their own. Hmm? So then at, uh, you can also do your, uh, from this you can also have your soft loans from your own cooperative. You group them into the cooperative. So you look for youth in different sectors. So you deal with them as per the sector they yeah. fall into. And uh, that's fine for those who are in the sector, but my biggest question is those who are not in any sector, because we have seen a lot of them even in this area, uh, youth who are unemployed. What plans do you have for them? What can you offer them you know, as an MC? Just to answer you, we have that, uh, mm -hmm. that youth belief. Mm -hmm. There's this belief that I must get employed in an office. White collar. White collar. That's when I believe that I'm employed. That's not employment. You know, it's no, not, not that all that is the employment. You can also become self-employed. 
So we just talk to them that we, we should not uh, have it in our mind that I must get employed by so and so. So we, I can also become my, my, uh, self-employed even in my farm. You get it? Yeah. So you plan on, you know, training yeah, them to training be able to to start their own their own, their own businesses, businesses or their own uh, ways of earning a livelihood. And they do livelihood. that, for example, in war, in East Game, we have this or the one vocational called the Mindine. Mindine yes. I will also encourage them in our community to at least take their children to the vocational training so that they get trained on these, uh, uh, like uh, they become artisans. They become carpenters. They, they become uh, fundies uh, around, so that at least many people we have uh, many people who are those who are we have fundies that now we only source them from outside, but just because there's no nobody has talked to our people or to our youth that you can go for this short term course at the vocational, no matter what class, if, even if you are a class three or class five. You can go to a vocational training center and you get trained. My leadership will partner with such, and for example, we have NETA mm -hmm. around yes. that offers hand training. Yeah. There's not that a theory, but practical handicraft, part of it. Yes. Mm, practical part of it. So that th these are those who have no jobs can be there. Even in the terms of motorcycle, when this person has a motorbike, this motorbike will need to be repaired. Who will repair it? At least we take some youth group, youth group. We take them for training at NETA. They get trained on how to um, uh, repair the motorcycles around, to mend the bunches around, so that at least we know that this person has a motorbike, so he will get an income through riding this motorbike. But the other youth will get something when this motorbike needs to be repaired. Yes. I think that is uh, elaborate and also uh, you've spoken about promotion of uh, of human resources in the area but I think I'd like you to just go deeper on what plans you have for the uh, for the professionals and entrepreneurs in this area and also you know for uh, for the discouragement of outsourcing the available local human resource where you know you get people maybe from towns like Kisumu but you don't use the professionals you know that are in this area. What is your plan on promoting the human resource Thank in this you. area? In terms of promotion of human resource, I'll make sure that there's no outsourcing of these services. Yes. If we have the people who are skilled and can offer those services. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to promote them. It is so unfortunate that you have, you will find that even in a school, for example, a classroom needs to be constructed. You carry fundi all the way even from Western, hmm? you see, to come and do it. Yes. Yet you have this person around. What is there, we must have it and we must have to tell our people that if so and so or the son of so and so is a fundi, let's give him a, an opportunity. You will find that some people will say, oh, so and so cannot do it. But he has not given a, him an opportunity to do it. So how will you judge that he cannot? The first thing, give him that opportunity to do it. Through that, I'll also promote, uh, for example, we'll have, I'll make sure that if there's something to be done around, we have our, for example, hardware around, why go and buy this material event from outside, mm. from different awards or from different accounts? We need also to promote these our people. I'll try, I'll try and make sure that all the resources that we have around must be first exploited. We only outsource when we lack. But when there is, we should not say that so and so cannot do it. Yet we have not we've not given him that opportunity. I have three more questions for you. I hope our viewers that yeah, you're watching and listening keenly to Jafwambo as he tells us about his plans for East Game. Um, and the question I want to ask you now is on the issue of health, which uh, you haven't tackled for the people of East Game, where I think when we look around the area, there's only a community hospital that is in Sagam. But also the hospital is not well e equipped when it comes to drugs, when it comes to workers. 
and there have been issues even with uh, the remuneration for the workers who, as it stands now, have not been paid for the last four months, even as we've celebrated Christmas, we've come into the new year. What is your take on health uh, in this area? But more than that, on the issue of the workers not getting their payments, how will they be able to work in such so, a hospital? Thank you for that. Health is a devolved function. And for, for your information, my, my priority first will be on health and agriculture. I normally tell them when now I'm campaigning that it will be so unfortunate if I tell you that I'll tarmac for you, Rod, and you lack something that you are eating in the house, I'll not be helping you. Mm -hmm. Or if I'll tell you that I'll make sure that every home has an electricity, yet if you go to the hospital, you don't have even that painkiller, mm -hmm. for example, Panadol. To. So the first thing, I'll make sure that all our health facilities around are well equipped and functional. Whereby even if I'm a leader, I can go to a health center within the world and get treated. So I'll make sure I'll give health priority and make sure that they are what. And for your, your information, this is the only word. What we want brought to me on board that to via as MC. This is the only word with the devolved unit as health. This is the only word that for the last now we are on the, in on the ninth year of devolution. We don't have even a foundation for health center. This is the only word. Out of 30 words in Sierra County, mm -hmm. I told you I'm a journalist. Yes. And I've gone round. You've gone through it, yes. And remember, even World Health Organization is telling us that somebody should not walk more than three or five kilometers looking for health. Yes. But in this world, health has been an, or left behind, health sector. I'll make sure that at least with the, within the four sublocations, at least there is health center whereby if, a, if somebody is sick, he can just walk into. And that health center must be functional, mm. well equipped with the, the... With the drugs and necessary equipment. And necessary equipment. And also, this bit, in this world, we had an NGO before called Millennium Villages Project. It built some health centers around. It came up with the community health volunteers or health workers. Services of these people have been neglected. Mm -hmm. These people played a role and they knew that in every, they, they, they even used to help even our... Uh, 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 our mothers around, mm. expectant mothers yes. around. Mm. And they usually help. So I'll make sure that I'll work together. I'll again reinstate th th those people to make sure that they're in every village. Yes. In East game we have 74 villages, mm -hmm. for example. I'll make sure that every village, there's that community health volunteer that will help us to drive the health issue. Yes. Thank you very much. And what would be the role of the traditional um, medical ex experts, if I may call them that? For example, the, the women who've practiced, you know, midwifery for la a long period of time and they're able to, to deliver and such people, will they have a place uh, in, in your health uh, plan for the people of East Game? Thank you. They will have a place. That, uh, those are the, the so-called traditional midwives or whatever. Yes. Yeah, they, they will have... Uh, a place, and that's why I'm saying, with working, working with the community health volunteers, will also help us identify such people on the ground, and we will bring them on board to work together with them. And your nomination process in the party was quite rigorous because uh, East Game was a very contentious uh, ward. Maybe tell us a bit about that and how you emerge to be the MCA of the area. Mm. I think first uh, it depends on uh, your my manifest. I think so. You see, when uh, you faced a panel or a ball or something of the sort, you must be sure that what am I going to offer to these people. So I think that that's the key. What do I have that other people have? For example, even right now, uh, what will make people vote for me or for someone? for me and leave some people, is who, what does it have for us? Yes. That's the main, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. Yes. So your manifesto has yeah. a lot of that's clarity. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you very much. And uh, um, um, my final question would be about, you know, the politics of this area where we have, you know, certain political parties who, who have a reign or a stronghold uh, for the people. And of course, uh, we know about them. I will not uh, go into the details of mentioning them. But what is your plan uh, in terms of working towards the people to be able to to see your candidature or to debunk, you know, the politics of families or the politics of strongholds or the politics of uh, brand in this area of CIA and especially East Game. Thank you. When I campaign, I tell my people that let's not vote for a political party. Yes. Vote for a leader or an individual. These people are there. Before you look for that political party, what you have to, that you want a leader who will perform. So what you are going to vote for, vote for a person, not party. Because this is the person who will do for you whatever you, your needs. So that's what I normally tell them. And I can see they are getting into that. And you will say that, you will see around, people will say, now there's no need of political party. <laughs> political parties, uh, just for example, if you are here in this game and mm. you want to go to Nairobi, we have different buses like Easy Coach, we have Guardian. Mm. So yeah. these political parties are those like... We have Periska. Yeah, we have those vehicles. But now you, if you board a Guardian, somebody also will board uh, an Easy Coach. The, the, the speed may vary. Yes. So I, we normally tell them that political parties are like those vehicles. And some of them may not even live at all. Yeah, <laughs> but at the end of the day, your destination you know your destination, yes. all of you. So I tell them that political parties are like that. Or political parties, for example, I was being asked, why did you choose CPK? When I was somewhere, we were somewhere in a church function, and my competitor, one of them, my competitor from different, another party, mm -hmm. he told me, oh, you know, this is the only party around. Yes. You should use this. Why did you choose to? Then I told them, for example, like here we are in, SEK, the Anglican Church of Kenya. Yes. We have the CCA. We have the Seventh Day Adventist. Mm -hmm. All of them use the Bible. And this Bible, we have Matthew. So you will find that the, a certain church will read a verse in Matthew. And then the same verse is being read in, also mm -hmm. in the SEK. Yes. CCA also read the same verse. But the interpretation is different. So the interpretation, so I told them that the way SEK interprets the verse is different with the way pastor from CCA already interpret that. So it is upon you, if you want to get that spiritual nourishment, it's upon you that you will identify that the way this pastor from this side uh, interpret it, uh, no, let me it's go not, to the yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that is it all. But uh, what I'm trying to tell them that is let's not look for political parties. Yes. They are just like the vehicles we bought. But the thing is, look for an individual. Vote for an individual. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jafwambo. And just to finish it off, of course, um, the aspirant of the member of parliament for the area of GEM comes from your area in East GEM and is also the vice chairperson of the Communist Party of Kenya. And your manifestos seem to be, you know, very much aligned, maybe because the issues of your people, you know, are one and the same. How do you plan to work together with the, in, uh, with the incoming uh, member of parliament in harnessing uh, the people, the issues of the people of, of GEM and East GEM specifically? Thank you. I can say that it's advantageous to me because having a, an MP from the same ward, meaning that East GEM will be elevated, mm -hmm. will be somewhere, mm -hmm. because we will work together. And just to tell you, I'll make sure that uh, my MP, the, the, the vice chairman of CPK, I'll make sure that within the world, if, uh, for, for him to be there, I'll make sure that East Game won't produce the much votes, if not 100% or 99% <laughs> for him to get to that seat. Oh. Because we are from the same yes. world, locality. Mm -hmm. We know the problems that our people face. Yes. I'll work together with him. And f before that, I'll make sure that every vote I get, he also gets that oh. vote. So that even if in case there are challenges from other words, I'll make sure that 
people from East Game will make sure that he wins that seat. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much for such a close finish, uh, Jeff Wambo, uh, who is our journalist. When I say CPK, you know, CPK. Viva. CPK. Viva. CPK. Viva. Thank you very much for availing yourself for this interview. It was a pleasure having you. It was a pleasure you. talking to you and hearing about your manifesto for the people of East Game. And thank you very much to our viewers for tuning in on this new year where you're catching us live from the ward of East Game, Game constituency and CIA County. This is CPK TV, the voice of the people. I'm your host, Sefusani, and from me, it's goodbye.